Fire awareness is important, um, but it is not a once a year thing. It's not something you just decide to do on May 15th or, or, or you know, a specific day of the year. It's, it's more of a something to make a habit of. And I know, um, you know, speaking for our colleagues and my colleagues here and even the Canadian wildland fire community, you know, diligence and awareness by Canadians is certainly a good thing. The CWFIS is an online hub for national wildland fire information. So this is around general awareness uh, for people and organizations. And I'd like to think of it as this is a great example of what can happen when uh, the provinces and territories, federal government, uh, research scientists and fire managers work together and collaborate. Canada is a largely forested nation, so there's no shortage of fuel available for those fires. And it's really weather that's limiting how often we see fire activity at a really extensive scale. The period of time with weather that allows fires to occur, which is generally referred to as the fire season, is extending or lengthening. In some areas, it's becoming longer by weeks due to earlier springs and also later autumns. We're engaged in research to better understand and anticipate these changes and to manage risk and to adapt to the current fire load, but we do understand that there seems to be a shift in the pattern of fire of, in Canada and we're observing this across many different data sources. We've had a, a different spring that's been very mixed up. We've, uh, the climate drivers, things like the El Nino index or on the weak side or Pacific dec decadal oscillations on the weak side. And when we have those things weak, we tend to have very mixed up weather patterns. I think generally the area is a bit smaller than what we've seen in, in past years. It's a little bit more confined to the, the west and quite often it's uh, spread out in different parts of the country. But uh, you know, from this point of view, it looks like the, the south will be in fairly good shape this spring. The northern regions will probably continue to stay dry and uh, probably be a bit more susceptible to fire in the, in the near future. Once you get into August, the precipitation levels tend to taper off. So you'll get that uh, forest drying out a little bit and becoming more conducive to, to fire. Every year we have wildland fires in Canada and every year Canadians are impacted by fire. So the impacts can be physical, like burning a home or having an asthma attack, social, like having a favorite campsite burn, mental, like being scared when you see smoke in the sky, or cultural, like where a medicinal plant site is lost due to a high intensity fire. So it's also very important to point out that there are things that people can do to reduce the impact of wildland fire. One thing is to check out the wildland or the Fire Smart Canada um, website. So it's firesmartcanada.ca. And there, there, there are a bunch of manuals and also very simple activities that residents can take to reduce their wildfire risk, such as, you know, moving a wood pile away from your home. And stay aware of the local fire hazard by checking provincial wildfire management agency websites or their social media accounts.